Hi, this is Dr. John Bergdorf. In this video, I would like to introduce you to a tool that is often used in elementary school classrooms to convey geometric concepts in a very easy visual way. The tool is called dot paper. And in this video, I'm going to use dot paper to explore concepts of area of two dimensional objects. Let me switch cameras so I can show you what this looks like. So this is dot paper, which as you can see, just is a whole big grid of dots. And um, I've drawn a polygon that joins some of the dots together. My ultimate goal for this video is to calculate the area of that polygon. So we'll get to that a little bit later. There's a tool very similar to this called a geo board. And what that is, is either a piece of wood or plastic in which instead of dots, you have pegs or nails. And to create line segments, you take rubber bands and stretch those between the pegs or the nails and create shapes of various kinds. So those are really cool as well. <clears throat> but we're gonna look at dot paper here. And again, I wanna use it to explore the idea of area. Now, before I tackle this very complicated shape right here, I'm gonna start with some simpler ones. Let me start, for example, with a rectangle. I'm gonna draw that over here in this corner. There's a nice rectangle like that. Now, if I wanted to calculate the area of that rectangle, it actually turns out to be pretty easy. You can pretty well observe that if you were to also join all the dots inside of that rectangle that you would be dividing up that red rectangle I drew into six little squares. Very simply, that means that the area, area of this rectangle is six square units. So I will write that down, that the area is six square units. Now, as I go through this video, I'm not gonna write out the word square units over and over and over again, <clears throat> mainly because I'm running out of space. Now that can be done, this can be uh, determined simply by counting, but it also can be used to emphasize a property that we also want our kids to learn, which is that for a rectangle, the area is the length times the width. The length would be the number of units going horizontally, let's say. <clears throat> there are one, two, three units. <clears throat> and the width would be two units going vertically. So the area is three times two. And that represents the six square units that we had already calculated. So the area can be demonstrated very simply. Now that's fine as long as your shape is a rectangle or maybe consists of several rectangles pasted together in some way, but our shapes might be much more irregular than that. Uh, this is actually not all that irregular, but I wanna show you, for example, a triangle. Suppose I draw a triangle by joining this point here to this point, uh, let's, let's choose that one. A straight line segment, or straight as I can draw, between here and here. Again, if, the, uh, if you had a geo board, you'd have two pegs and you'd stretch a rubber band. And then let me run, oh, let's go this way for a while. And let me run another side this way. So that's a triangle. And I apologize if those sides aren't perfectly straight. What is the area contained inside this triangle? Well, I have, I'm gonna have trouble counting square units here. There are obviously some squares that are completely within the triangle, and I could count some of them like those, but then there are some where you kind of go inside and you kind of go outside. Look at, for example, if I drew this square, well, that doesn't exactly go from corner to corner. So, you know, what portion of that could that be? Some fraction of it. I don't know what. Well, there's a very easy trick that we can follow that's going to actually help me eventually with this fellow down here too. Take one of the sides of the triangle and observe the two dots that form its endpoint. Let those dots become the, the opposite diagonal corners of a rectangle that you draw like this. 
I'm going to draw like that, and like that, and like that, and like that. Why is that helpful? Well, the area of that rectangle is easy to figure out. It would be one, two, three, four, five, six squared units just by counting. And more importantly, if I, especially if that line is very, very precise and straight, you can hopefully see that the part of the of that rectangle that lies within the red triangle is exactly half of the entire rectangle. So if the rectangle has an area of six square units, then the part of the rectangle that lies inside the triangle would be half of six or three square units. Now you can do that with any diagonal line across any geometric shape. Let's take this side of the triangle here, create a rectangle where that red line segment would be a diagonal. So join this point horizontally until you're right above the opposite point and then down, continue it around, create a rectangle. In this case, actually it's a square. And the part of the rectangle that lies with inside the red triangle is exactly half of that, half of that rectangle. So if I look at this rectangle again by counting or by using my formula, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine squares. If I can re-emphasize that just for emphasis, here are my squares. And you can see really plainly all nine of them in there. So there's nine square units altogether, but the part that's inside the triangle would be half of that, which is 4.5, four and a half. And so if I wanted the total area inside that triangle, I'd take three square units, which represents this region, and 4.5 square units, which represents this region, and simply add them together for a total of 7.5, and I'll say this once or twice here, square units. Now, if I look at this a different way, if I think about the entire, kind of put these two rectangles together and create this big rectangle I'm drawing here, that rectangle is one, two, three, four, five units this way and three units that way. By our formula over here, the area of that entire larger green rectangle would be three times five. And if you think about it, the part that lies within the triangle, well, it's half of this area and half of this area so altogether, it's half of the entire rectangle. And where that leads to is another form famous formula that for a triangle, the area is one half the base times the height, where the base is simply this length along the bottom of the triangle, which is a side of the rectangle, and the height goes from the opposite vertex down to the base, which is also the same length as this side of the rectangle. Five times three times a half would give you seven and a half, which is exactly what you get if you think about just, hey, I'm going to divide uh, into rectangles by joining diagonal points. So I hope that's kind of cool. And you could use this same approach to explore a trapezoid and its area or a parallelogram or a kite or pretty much any geometric two-dimensional form you would like. Let's tackle this much more elaborate shape here. What I am going to do is I'm gonna do basically what I did with this triangle. I am going to represent this region as either half of rectangles, a bunch of them added together, or full rectangles. Let me show you what that means. I'm just gonna pick a side to start with. Let's pick this side. And very much like I did with the triangle, what I'd like to do is create a rectangle where these two points would be the opposite diagonal vertices. So in other words, I'm gonna start here and go down, over and up and back. And the rectangle I drew, the red, uh, line segment would cut that exactly in half. 
So although I can't really see exactly what that area is concretely, I do know that it would be half of the area of the rectangle, and I could figure that out. I'm going to call this rectangle 1, and I'm simply going to count the squares. I can draw them in for a little while. I think I'm going to quit doing this in a bit. But just to make it totally clear, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to go down here into this chart where I'm going to stay organized. This is rectangle 1. The rectangle itself consists of 5 squares or 5 square units. The part of the rectangle that lies inside the red polygon would be half of that region. So I simply can say, well, what's half of five? Half of five is two and a half or 2.5. So the portion of, tri of rectangle one that lies within the red polygon has an area of 2.5 square units. Now, what you do is kind of work your way around the polygon Every time you get to a side of the polygon, create the rectangle for which these two points would be the diagonal endpoints. So for I'd go over here and go something like this, over, down, over, and of course then back up. So that the red line segment does form exactly a diagonal of some rectangle you've drawn. Because the area of the rectangle is easy to find either by simply counting squares or by taking length times width, length times width, and then the area of that square, that rectangle that lies inside the polygon would be half of the area of the entire rectangle. So again, let me count. I'm gonna, if if you're doing this with little kids, you would have them count, not really use formulas. So let me do that. I'm counting squares: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight squares within that rectangle I have just drawn. Let me emphasize it. I think this will be the last time I do that, but just to show the eight squares, let's call this cleverly rectangle two. So two is the entire rectangle. Uh, area, the rectangle two would have an area of eight square units. We just counted them. And the portion of the rectangle that lies within the red polygon would be half of that, and that's four. So I hope that makes sense. And what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to work my way around this polygon. And in each case, take a side, create a rectangle for which that red side would be a diagonal. So I create a rectangle like this. I'll come back and do the area. From here to here, the rectangle would have to go down, over, up and over, and I take half of that. And then finally for this side, it goes from here to here. Again, that's gonna be the diagonal side. We'll go along this way. You'd have to go to this corner. We'll go all through here like that. Now, if you think about the areas that I've found so far, or that I will have found in a few minutes, we're looking at this area, this area, this area, this area, and this area. But what you'll notice is what I'm shading here in this yellow is not the entire area within that uh, polygon. I'd have to somehow account for this rather irregular shape here. Now this shape is not a triangle, um, so I can't do you know, some sort of thing with the diagonals. And I want to limit the formulas I have. I don't really want to try to figure out a formula for a shape that looks like this. However, you should be able to take pretty much any shape you have and subdivide it into simpler shapes. If I, for example, just drew a line segment like this, I would split that area into two rectangles, and it would be easy to find that area and this area, again, by counting. And then I simply could add up all of those areas, and that would give me the entire area inside the polygon. Let me label some of these regions, and then we'll go down here and kind of finish out this chart. 
I'm going to call this region region three. That's a rectangle. This is going to be four right here. I'll call this five. So five represents the rectangle and only half of it's inside the, the polygon. Uh, I think I'll call this one six and this one seven. And then that gives me seven shapes. I kind of knew in advance that's what I was going to get. And for each case, let me count what I have. So um, rectangle three is clearly has one, two, three units. All three of them are within inside the polygon. So I'm not going to divide by half. All three of those are inside the polygon. So I count all three. Um, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, or three by four, three times four is 12. So that's 12 units, 12 square units inside uh, four. Now that entire yeah. rectangle, both of the green ones are entirely inside the region. So the area we count is 12. But when we get to triangle, uh, excuse me, rectangle number five, we're back to the idea that we're only going to take half of it. So rectangle five has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight square units in it. Because the red diagonal cuts the region in half, only half of those uh, square units lie within inside the red polygon. So that's four square units, half of that. Six. You can count squares. There'll be 25 of them. Or you can simply, as maybe the kids get a little bit more comfortable, say, hey, look, one, two, three, four, five units this way, one, two, three, four, five units that way. Five times five is 25. 25 square units within all of rectangle six. But the part we want, the part I shaded in yellow, would only be half of that. 25 divided by two is 12 and a half or 12.5 square units within both rectangle six and the red polygon. And finally, rectangle number seven, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. It's five by four. So that's 20 square units. Let me count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Again, letting the kids just count. Only half of that is with inside the red, po red polygon. So that accounts for an area of 10 square units. Finally, to figure out the entire area inside that polygon, everything I have shaded in yellow or, red, uh, yellow or green, sorry, would simply be found by adding up all of these numbers. And if you use a calculator or by hand, whichever it may be, the sum of all those numbers is 48. And so the region enclosed uh, by this red polygon has an area of 48 units squared or square units. So that's just one example of what you can do with dot paper. It's wonderful to explore ideas of areas, including developing the formulas. Um, and it's also a lot of fun for the kids to play with. So I hope that's been fun.